If you can lift up your hands, if you can just open up your mouth and bless his name, your, your fragrance should come before the Lord as a sweet smelling aroma before him. Oh, let our praise, let our prayer rise to you as incense. Let the lifting up of our hands be as an evening sacrifice to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, receive your incense. Present your incense to the Lord. Let us fill this house with praise. And receive. This living sacrifice, I am your worship. Receive
our will to you this morning. We surrender all that we have unto you today, O oh God, that you may have your way in our lives. We ask you, God, that your perfect will will be done in each one of our lives today and the days to come, O oh God. We give all unto you this morning. We give all unto you with a joyful heart, O oh God. We willingly give you all, O oh God, that you may use us as you will, that you may heal us, O oh God. We surrender our hearts. We surrender what has been hurting us as individuals, that which that has hurt our hearts, O oh God. We surrender to you this morning that you may heal us, O oh God. Heal our lives. Heal our lives. Heal our families, O oh God. Heal our families. Heal our households, O oh God. Heal our parents, O oh God. Heal our, our, our friends, O oh God. Those that are close to us and are ailing, heal them, O oh God. Heal our friends and our relatives, O oh God. We trust you and you know you will do it to us. And you have begun to do it, O oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. So welcome to session two of day two, Women of Grace Conference 2024. Tell your neighbor, welcome. Hallelujah. So you, I, there's no time to take a photo like Bishop. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's all right. So please have your seats. Isn't it good to be here? It's wonderful. Tell your neighbor, it's wonderful to be here. And indeed, my heart is blessed. If your heart is blessed, just tell them. <laughs> All right, my name is Andrisa. It's my honor and privilege to just welcome you to this second session of day two. And um, just before I welcome Dr. Lucy, I have one special announcement, which is very, very close to my heart. Men's conference, fast, <laughs> clap your hands. Tell your neighbor, first of May, 2024, from 8.30 a.m., all the men in our lives will be here for a special conference. As a, a commercial break, I was told that the men in our church were told, even if we don't meet for seven years, when we meet, we should find you strong and doing well. <laughs> Have you gotten the joke? Even if we take 10 years to meet, men, we should find you strong and doing well. Atakama, <laughs> after how many days? But... Um, Thankfully, we have this conference coming up. We want to have about 500 men gather here. Isn't it? Can we do that? Those that are coming from Chogoria. Chogoria kwanza mutakuwa na men singing. Tumewapatia hiyo. So please, welcome the men in your lives 12 years and above. You're considered a man in this church. 12 years and so let's put our hands together. Welcome Dr. Lucy to lead us on. The good thing with the men's conference, the women are not welcome. <laughs> That's a good thing with the men's conference. Make my sound better. Uh, tell your neighbor, but women are not welcome. <laughs> but the women can support the men to come. I've actually been thinking that, you know, the women of grace should really support the men's conference on that day. Amen? Amen. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we want to go into the next session so that we can hear the word of God uh, for another one hour. The women of grace conference is word heavy. That is the way we set it. That is the way we do it. It is word intensive. And that is how God told us to do it. And uh, this morning, to take us through this one hour, is the, none other than our friend, the mother of five. Yes, five, five children. 
three boys, two girls. The first one is called Ianu. The second one is called Adaba. The third one is called Akuku. The fourth one is called uh, 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 Okiki. And the last one is called Eri. Wow. And they are my good friends. Some of them always wanted me to come back with them, put them in the bag, and they appear in Kenya. One of these days, there is one I promise. I think it's Akuku. Uh, we should make sure that he comes so that you can see where Dr. Laura comes from. But before then, we shall have gone again to Dr. Laura's home, amen, amen. so that you can see where she comes from. Thank you, Dr. Laura. Please come and minister to us. <laughs> Dr. Laura leads a church called the House of David, or is it the City of David, or is it House. The, House. the House of David, right in Ado Ekiti. And by the way, when you go, give them our greetings and tell them we love them. Amen. God amen. bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucy, for giving me the opportunity to come and minister. And I also appreciate Apostle James. Thank you so much. And uh, I honor every man of God, every woman of God in this place. Mom, you are, I honor you. Thank you. Amen. Father, we appreciate you once again. Thank you for your sweet aroma that is in this place. Thank you for all the blessings that you have poured upon us and that you are still pouring upon us. We thank you for your word. We open up ourselves again to receive from you. Thank you because we know you will do much more than what we can ask or think according to your power that works in us. Thank you, sweet spirit of God. Amen. So the fragrance of Christ. I want us to start this morning from Psalm 45. Psalm 45. Okay, maybe we read, let's read the text where the theme is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Then we come back to Psalm 45. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 12. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus, my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. And maketh manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God the sweet savour of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savour of death unto death, and to the other the savour of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but, but as of sincerity. But as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. So we said the fragrance of Christ comes from his name. Songs of Solomon 1.3. He says your name is an ointment poured forth. There's an aroma in the name of Jesus. Then we also said Christ's testimonies. There's, there's an aroma that comes from Christ's testimonies what he has done, what his word has done, what his word is still doing, the triumph of his word. When we share the testimonies of what the word has done in our lives, there's an aroma, there's a fragrance that spreads to make other people, to make nations to come to the kingdom. Then we said the aroma also comes from the totality of our lives in the offering and sacrifice when we lay our lives down as, a, as an offering and as a sacrifice, it brings a sweet-smelling savour unto our God and unto our world. And we said, when we, you know, the aroma also comes as we bear the sweet odour of Christ's gospel everywhere, the knowledge of Christ as we bear it everywhere. And to some, it is a savour of life to life. To others, it is a savour of death unto death. Not everybody enjoys that aroma that comes from Christ. Just like, you know, not everyone 
somebody that is sick. Honey is bitter to the person that is sick. And we also said that the aroma comes from his garments. So let's go to Psalm 45. Psalm 45, the aroma, the fragrance comes from the garment of Christ. Psalm 45, let me read from verse 1. It's good to read the scriptures. My heart is overflowing with a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made, touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Guard thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God that anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of ma and halos and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. And we said yesterday that all, I want you to note, all thy garments, all thy garments. Christ does not just have just one garment. And all the garments are so invested in the anointing, in the ointment. You know, he says all thy garments smell of ma. Ma is one of the components of the anointing. The ointment, aloes, and cassia, all these garments drip in the, you know, they distill fragrance. They distill a sweet aroma. All the components of the oil, of the ointment, are so perfectly blended in him that it gives a sweet smell, a sweet scent anywhere that he goes. And you know, we don't just rejoice in the fact that he is our high priest. We don't just, you know, enjoy the sweetness of the aroma of the white robe of his high priesthood. He's our high priest. Just like the Bible says that, you know, we do not have an high priest which cannot be touched by the reason of our infirmity in every way was tested and yet without sin. It's not just only our high priest. He himself is the sacrifice. He himself is the mercy seat, the illustrion, our propitiation for sin. You know, we rejoice in the aroma of his garment, the white robe of, his high, of the high priest. As the one that made access, it's by that blood that he shed that we are given access to the throne of God, to the holiest of all. It is by that blood that he shed as our high priest, not just as the high priest, but as the sacrifice that gave us peace. The Bible says that we have peace through his blood. It is in that blood that we have redemption. It says in whom we have redemption through his blood. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 12. Even the forgiveness of sins. So we enjoy, we enjoy, you know, we bask in the sweet aroma of his white robe as our high priest. And we also enjoy the sweetness of the aroma that comes from his mantle as our prophet. Mm. Our prophet, you know, we have the word of God. We have been given a Bible that contained what happened in the past. What is happening presently. And that's why any time that we come to the word of God, it addresses our situation. So that's part of the aroma of the, of the mantle of the prophet. He himself is the word. And he doesn't just address the past. He addresses the present. The word is new every day, highly prophetic. And we don't just, it doesn't just address what is happening now. When we go to the scriptures, there are things that are yet to come. And that's why we have a confidence that no matter the economic upheaval in the world, we have hope through the scriptures. So we enjoy the sweetness of the aroma as, you know, the mantle of the prophet that he wears. Then we also enjoy 
the aroma of his purple robe of dominion as our king. And that you see in the book of Matthew 15, 17. When they put on him the purple robe, they were mocking him, not knowing they were mocking themselves. Because he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. So we delight in his purple robe of dominion as our king. There is a sweetness in his royalty because his own kingship does not oppress. No oppression in him. He's not a usurper like Lucifer. God himself said, Psalm 2, he says, I have set you a king. I have set you as a king on my holy mountains forever. Thy throne, O God, is forever. God himself was the one that set him, that inaugurated him as a king, that established him as a king. He didn't hijack kingdom. So we bask in that aroma of him being a king. And we also rejoice in the fact that in his own kingship, there is no oppression. You know, he says, in your, in, in, you know, ride prosperously in thy truth. You know, in meekness and righteousness. Those are the wheels of the chariot of our king. He himself is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth talks about judgment and justice. He doesn't take bribe. He cannot change the standard of justice. You will know that he will do to you what is befitting, what is fit. So we have a confidence. There's a sweetness we enjoy in that. And we also enjoy the fact that the aroma of his meekness as our king, not like every other king, Kings in the past, especially the Roman kings, on their own day of the triumphal procession, when they go to battles and they win, some of them, they ride lions, you know, into the city. They ride with pomp and pageantry in pride and arrogance that we have conquered all. Some of them even ride in, in they, they, they ride on elephants. Some ride on horses, but we see our own king, just like Zechariah says, says, behold, daughter of Zion. Your king is coming, meek and lowly, riding upon the ass. He doesn't need to ride upon the ass, and that talks about meekness. If not for meekness, for his meekness, many of us would have been discarded. David said, your gentleness has made me great. Bearing with us in his gentleness, in his meekness. Though his eye and mighty, the most eye, yet is lowly. Though he's the you know, the, 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 the most high, the El Elyon, when you get to him, you cannot climb any further. Yet he reaches down to us in our low estate. So we enjoy the sweetness of, of his kingship in meekness. Then he's, you know, he rides on the wheel of righteousness. The Bible says that thou lovest righteousness. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 8. And hated wickedness and hated lawlessness. Righteousness talks about order. Righteousness talks about being right. Doing things that are, you know, that, that, that will not harm, that will not hurt. Standing in the right things concerning every one of us. So we, uh, we enjoy. That's why he carried an aroma that cannot be limited. His fragrance is not limited in time, not limited in scope, not limited in magnitude. And you know, for his garments to be soaked with, the, with, the, with fragrance, with perfume, that is not just talking about a drop of oil. The spirit was given to him without measure. That's why it lasts, you know, it will last from generation to generation, to eternity, that perfume can never be exhausted. He carries the spirit without measure. Just like when the high priest is consecrated on the day, you know, in Israel at that time, they don't just drop a drop of oil on the head of the high priest. And it's our high priest. Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He says, It's like the precious ointment upon the head. The whole vessel of the oil is, is released upon the head of the high priest. And it flows to the beard. And 
to his garments, to the skirts of his garment, flowing everywhere to reach even the least in the body. That's talking about a measureless anointing. That's why that fragrance, that aroma will never end. So we delight in his purple robe as our king. And we also said he's a warrior king. Guarding his sword upon his thigh. Where he can easily be pulled out to be used for your defense. To defend you. He's not a complacent king that is not moved, that is not touched by what his subjects are going through. And as a warrior king, he also has raised us as kings. He has raised us as kings. He has, he has taught us how to fight. Not like Saul, that the only thing that Saul left for his people, he only clothed them with ornaments. Let's see 1 Samuel 13, 22. Saul only clothed the Israelites with ornaments and with a superficial garment. But our own king has provision on his table to strengthen our heart. Bread to strengthen our heart. Spiced wine to give us boldness. To give us red eye. You know? Acute red eye is not just when somebody slaps somebody. When you drink enough wine of the word and of the spirit, you have a red eye that demons run from. So on the table of our own king, there is enough provision. Like David on his day of his inauguration that give his people bread, flesh, and a flagon of wine. Not like Saul. Let's read the account of Saul. Saul only left superficial things for his own people. First Samuel 13. Let's read Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Second Samuel 2. So the aroma also comes from the provision on the table of our king. The bread, the flesh, and the wine. Let me read the account for us here. I'm reading 2 Samuel 1. It says, Ye daughters, I'm reading verse 24. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with other delights, who put an ornament of gold upon your apparel. Saul couldn't feed them as their king. He only left what could only be superficial with them. He only clothed them, gave them an outer covering. And that was why they didn't have the strength to stand before their enemies. You know, that's why David is a type of Christ. The Bible says that he chose David, Psalm 78 from verse 77, out of, you know, the midst of the sheepfold. And he fed them to come and shepherd these people. And the Bible says that he fed them you know, in the integrity of his heart. That's why men that were distressed, men that were discontented, men that were in debt, he raised them and fed them so much until they became the mighty men of David. Men that don't know how to turn back from the enemy by what David fed them. So we rejoice in the aroma of the provision on the table of our king. That's Psalm 78 from verse 77. And we also said, we rejoice in his seamless robe as our friend, his seamless coat as our friend. We rejoice in his seamless coat as our friend. Let's see John 19 verse 23. We rejoice in the aroma of his sweet seamless coat as our friend. John 19 23. That seamless coat stands for boundless love, limitless love. And the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments, you see, garments, and made four parts. That aroma reaches to the four, four hands of the heart. So each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. 
So we rejoice in a seamless coat as our friend. Just like Joseph, a type of Christ. The Bible says that Joseph, in the book of Genesis 49, verse 22, Joseph is a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough that reaches over the wall. No limitation, no boundary. And we said the friendship of Jesus broke through geogra geographical limitation. He broke through religious limitation. He broke through gender limitation. That's why you see him reaching out to the Samaritan woman. He broke through cultural limitation. And we said that his love, the love as a friend is condescending. It flows down. Reaching to every one of us. And I want us to see. Let's see Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24. We rejoice in the aroma of his seamless coat as our friend. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than, our bro than a brother. Christ is that friend that sticks closer than a, a brother. When everybody abandons you, you can be sure he will never leave you. He said that we never leave you nor forsake you. So you can have confidence. No matter who is leaving you. No matter who is abandoning you. David said, when my father and my mother forsake me, yet the Lord will take me up. I see him taking somebody up here. As our friend, he has an, you know, he's extravagant in his love towards us. It's like a waste. How can you come, leave everything, emptied yourself of everything, and came down to the earth? He emptied himself of, of his own blood. He didn't just drop a pinch of his blood. He was emptied of every ounce of his blood. That's why when you see the resurrected Jesus, his flesh, he told the disciples, he told them, Peter, touch me, Thomas, touch me. Uh, flesh doesn't have flesh and bone. No blood again because all the blood has been drained. That's extravagant love as a friend. The friend that loves at all times. He sticks closer than a brother. I want us to see Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. He loves at all times, no matter your state, no matter your position. You can be sure the love of that friend Christ will never leave you. Proverbs 17. Let's read verse 17. That's why always look up to him. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Do you know even, he called, even Judas, after Judas had betrayed him, he still called Judas friend. That's uncommon. Let's see it in the book of Matthew 26, 50. He never referred to Judas as an enemy. He loves the unlovable. Matthew 26, 50. But Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. That was the person that betrayed him with a kiss. He knew he was going to betray him because he's a prophet. If it were to be me, the moment he's coming to betray me with a kiss, I will land him a dirty slap. But Jesus said, friend. Do you know, if, if, if Judas has not gone, had not gone to commit suicide, if he had come, Jesus would have received him back. Love that is boundless, that can reach to you, to us, even in the depth of hell. Love that can go to any extent to recover whosoever might have fallen. We rejoice in that aroma 
as our friend. Let's also see Psalm 41, verse 9. And that's why no matter your, what you might have done, don't run from this friend. He loves you. You might have fallen over and over again. He will never reject you. Be like Peter. Peter said, where will we go from you? When everybody was leaving him, because he preached a message that they leave church is not a news. They left the church of Christ. Mm, that people leave church, uh, don't go into depression. Even the, the church of Jesus Christ in his own day, didn't they leave him? Just because he preached that until you eat my bread and drink my blood, a multitude left him. Mm. He didn't say come back. He turned to Peter. Will you also go away? That means I'm giving you a license. If you want to go, you are free to go. The doors are open. But Peter said, where will we go? To whom shall we go? And that's why I encourage somebody here. No matter what you may be passing through, please, always come. His heart is open for you. He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. He will never turn you back. He says, come, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and you will find rest for your soul. He will never turn you back, no matter what. To whom shall we go? For thou hast the word. Thou hast the word. He didn't say thou hast the instrument of eternal life. Or thou hast, you know, the decorations of eternal life. Thou hast the word of eternal life. He says, then his love is condescending. That's why they call him a friend of publicans and sinners. Publicans were so notorious in those days. Tax collectors. Everybody hated them. Yet Jesus was called the friend of publican and sinner. If he was a friend of publican and sinner, how much more you that he has redeemed by his own blood? I have found a friend in Jesus. It's everything to me. It's everything to you. Don't let the devil push you out. Don't let what you are passing through push you out. Don't even let the strain and the stress of ministry make you to go away. Stay with him. He's a true friend. Luke 7, 34. Let's read it. No friendship like his, like his, like his own friendship. Luke 7, 34. The son of man has come eating and drinking. And you say, look, a gluten and a wine baba, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And you know, he is the Samaritan. He is the Samaritan. They refer to him as the Samaritan. Let's see John 8, 48. He's the Samaritan. The Samaritan that is ready to, to show love. That is ready to abandon all ev everything and attend to the sick and the wounded. That's why I command every sickness to be healed in your life. It's the Samaritan. They refer to him as the Samaritan. John 8, 48. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Let's go to Luke 10. Luke 10 from verse 33. A friend indeed and a friend in need. That's our Jesus for you. My prayer is that you will not look for love where there is no love. You won't abandon the living system and be looking for waters where there are no waters. Luke 10. From verse 33. It says, But a certain Samaritan as he journeyed, and you know, he's the Samaritan. He's the stranger among us. Psalm 69 says, you have, you, I'm, I've become a stranger to my brethren. 
and an alien to my mother's children. So he's the Samaritan among us. He's John, he journeyed from heaven to the earth and came to where we were wounded, robbed of everything that we had. That man was journeying, just like every one of us, man was journeying from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jericho is a cost land. The earth where we are is a cost place. And as every one of us, we were journeying, we have been robbed, we, we fell among thieves, Satan and his host of demons. And they robbed us of everything. Took dignity, took the glory of God, took the righteousness of God from us. And left many of us half wounded. Half wounded. The priest passed by, the law passed by, couldn't help us. The Levi passed by and crossed to the other side. But here comes the Samaritan, our Christ. With his seamless robe. And he got down from the horse. He came down from heaven, got down from his high position, got down from his glory, and attended to us. We didn't look for him. We were so wounded to look for him. We didn't want him. We were so oppressed and bastardized to look for him. But he looked for us. He came reaching out to us in our wounds. And he poured his oil. Brought his spirit to heal our wounds. He poured wine. He breathed his spirit upon us. Wine represents the Holy Spirit. Oil represents the anointing. He gave us the two. He didn't just pour the oil. Gave us the spirit as a seal. You know, Pour the anointing upon us to comfort us, to heal our wounds. He lifted the man. He lifted up. Lifted us up from our state of deprivation, from our state of Ichabod, and lifted us to his own horse. He says, if the children were partakers of flesh and blood, he himself took part in the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power over, that, over death. And he lifted us to his own level. A friend that does not make you to remain lower than him. He took us to his own level. Put us on the same us with him. Didn't care about our blood stain, our pollutions, our corruptions, but put us in the same horse with him. And took us to the inn, brought us into his church, into the water brooks, And handed us over to the innkeeper, to the fivefold ministry, to nurse us. That's why we are not your enemies. I'm not your enemy. He handed you over to the fivefold ministers. To continue the work of the friendship. To continue the work of your healing. To continue the work of your comfort. To give you a covering. A place where you can belong. Handed you over to the innkeeper. And said, you know, take care of this man. The bill is on me. Every of your bill is on Christ. Why are you having high blood pressure? You have two children. You are giving yourself high blood pressure. Me that I have five. <laughs> My bill is on Christ. Say, my bill is on Christ. Leave it 
to him. Give it to him. He fed over three million without, without farm in the wilderness. How many are you in your household? No garden? No farm? No sponsorship from the UN? No impesa. <laughs> and they hate. And they, wore they wore clothes. Hey. Their shoes didn't wear out. Their garments didn't wear out. Under the cloud of the glory of God. No serpents came out to buy them. He brought them out with silver and gold. No one feeble person among their tribe. No more feebleness in your life. Yeah. Even the 85 year old man was not feeble. Yeah. The pregnant women were not feeble. Some of them were pregnant. Pregnancy is not a sickness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when they are sick, They were bouncing like a stone. Yeah. Under the pillar of cloud by day. Amen. Pillar of fire by night. They lacked nothing. When you know this, no more high blood pressure. Amen. No more peptic ulcer. Amen. Handed him over to the innkeeper. Yeah. Everything you need, if you spend more, put it on my bill. All this life of a uh, drop, drop. You want to drink water, you, are measure, you measure the, the rice in your house. <laughs> one cup. This afternoon, I locked the other one in the cupboard. <laughs> it, it's because you don't know that Samaritan that brought you to the inn. You are not an orphan. Yeah. Said I will not leave you orphanos. Like an orphan. An orphan is somebody that is always in need. You are not an orphan. Amen. You have a father. Amen. Zacchaeus. He says on the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper. And said to him, take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. We rejoice in the aroma of his seamless coat as a redeeming friend. A redeeming friend. Let's see John 15 verse 13. John 15 13. Is your king's man redeemer? John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this. Than to lay down one's life for his friends. For his friends. He has redeemed you. He has bought you back. He has bought me back from the hand of the devil. From the hand of the enemy. Colossians 1 from verse 12 says, Giving thanks. Unto him in all things. He says, who hath delivered us? I am delivered. I am delivered. Who hath delivered us? All of us, we were like, we were in chains. The devil put us in chains and locked us up inside prison. But the king's man redeemer, the friend came. Who hath redeemed us from the power of darkness? He first, he delivered you. He broke all your chains and all your bondages. And freed you, delivered you from the power of darkness, from the authority of darkness. Devil has no authority over my life. I don't belong to him. 
Whatsoever authority is using over you to bring sickness, to bring death, is illegal. He has delivered you from the authority of darkness. He didn't stop there. He has oh, he translated you. That means there was a shift. There was a change of address. I'm no longer under the devil. I'm not one of his own. He can't terrorize me. He can't terrorize you. You don't belong to him. He translated you. He took you from under the covering, under the authority, under the dominion of darkness. I know he's the prince of darkness. He's the devil. Translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. I am here now. To enjoy everything that is in the kingdom. To enjoy the commonwealth of Israel. Redeeming friend. I want us to see Zechariah 13, 6. He was wounded in the house of his friends. Yet he still call us friends and call us his own. And one will say to him, What are these wounds between your hands? Then he will answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Wounded. That's why my prayer is that none of us here will be inflicting more wounds on Christ. When you disobey, you inflict another wound. When you rebel, you inflict another wound. When you walk out from under your apostolic covering, pastoral covering, you inflict another wound. Where are you going to? Are you going back to the robbers outside there? The robbers are still there. That wounded you in the first place. Stay in the inn. And stay with the innkeeper. It's with the innkeeper that your provision is. It's in the innkeeper that your bill will be paid. When you move away, you are on, on your own. May you, be on, may you not be on your own. Stay in your local assembly. He elevated us to his own level as a friend. John 15, 14 to 15. John 15, 14 to 15. You are my friends. If you do whatever I tell you. In fact, he told his disciples, he said, I no longer call you servants. For a servant does not know what his Lord doeth. But I now call you friends. He has brought me to his banqueting table. I share in his deep counsels, in his deep secrets. That's what belongs to a friend. I share in everything that he has. I'm his representative on behalf. And I stand in that authority everywhere that I go. So he call you his friend. Don't carry yourself as if you are a slave. Don't package yourself as if you are an accident going somewhere to happen. <laughs> the friend of the president doesn't just walk anyhow. Doesn't package himself anyhow. You see, he has a good smell. Get a good smell. Religion, we say don't use perfume. What should you use? When Jesus smells well. A friend of the president doesn't carry himself anyhow. He says, I no longer call you a servant. I call you friend. That's elevation. Everywhere I go, I carry myself. I'm the friend of the owner of the house. Mm. The one that has the world as his footstool. Mm. That's who you are. Don't bend and bow. You are not bow down. You are not downtrodden. When they are looking for the poor, you are not one of them. 
the owner of the heaven and the earth is your friend. Everything, you know, he has brought you. you, you are, in fact, you have the ATM to his account. I hope you will start to withdraw. Do they call it ATM here? I hope you will start to withdraw. Some of us, we have not been withdrawing. Even me, myself, when I get back, now I withdraw. Just press it. Inexhaustible resources. It's my friend. Everything at your disposal. It's extravagant as our friend. Let's see it in Psalm 45. Psalm 45. Extravagant. Grace, extravagant. Mercy, extravagant. That's why the Bible says that the God that is rich in mercy. Everything about God is wide and, and deep and high. Inexhaustible. That's the friend that you have. He says, I'm reading verse 13. Extravagant. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or think. According to his power that works within you. He says, the king's daughter is all glorious within. She's manifesting his glory. You are a king's daughter. I told you yesterday, we are king's daughter as the church. We are the daughter of a king. We are the wife of the king. We are queen. And we are also mothers of kings. Our clothing is of wrought gold. You see, wrought gold. That is the richest of metals. She shall be brought into the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins are companions. She shall be brought, one says, she shall be brought in, the, in, in offer, gold of offer, the purest of gold. No adulteration, no contamination. As our friend, we rejoice in the sweetness of his counsel. Let's see Proverbs 27 verse 8. We rejoice in the sweetness of his counsel. You will no longer be confused. That's not your portion. Confusion is not your portion. That you are wondering, what should I do with my life? Where should I go? What business will I do? We rejoice in the sweetness of his counsel. Doc can give me counsel. I've learned from his life. I've, I've taken counsel from her. And when I apply those things, I get better results. Jesus is your friend. You have access to his sweet counsel. Ointment and perfume delight the heart. And the sweetness of a man's friend gives the light by hearty counsel. Isaiah 9 says he's the wonderful counselor. He gives you counsel that makes you to prevail. Counsel that makes you wiser than your enemies. Counsel that makes you stronger than your enemy. That the enemy can, you become a wonder to your enemy. Those are the counsels. How can you fail with such counsels? Every spirit telling that you are a failure, I shut their mouth down. Amen. Every spirit telling you that you are nobody. How can you have this behind you? Every spirit telling you that you are nobody, that you are a failure, that nothing is working in your life, I silence them. Is the wonderful counselor. Amen. Wonderful counselor. That means when you take those counsels, you become a wonder in their half. He says, behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders from the Lord of hosts by his wonderful counselor. It's a faithful friend. Proverbs 27 verse 6 is a faithful friend. Reliable. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. 
but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So even when you come to church, you are in the inn, and it's as if you are wounded by the word of God, just like Apostle said. That word broke you. Don't run away. Mm. The wounds that a friend inflicts is faithful. Yes. It is to give you life. Yeah. Don't run to where they will be flattering you until you get inside their hole and pit. Aye. Two spirits. Mm. Flattering spirit and fathering spirit. Fathering spirit may inflict wounds on you to help you. But flattering spirit will blow you up until you burst into pieces. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Let's also see Psalm 141 verse 5. His corrections is for your own good. It's to minister life to you. When he corrects you with his word, don't walk away. Don't get angry at the innkeeper. Don't get angry at the other brethren in the inn. When he corrects you, rebukes you, it's for your own good. Psalm 141 from verse 5, it says, Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness. Let him rebuke me. It shall be an excellent oil. That will not break my head. That's what a walking James says. It will not, that oil, that rebuke will not break your head. Then we rejoice in the aroma of his robe as the teacher, the rabbi. We delight in his, the aroma of his, of his robe as what? Teacher, teacher of teachers. You see, whatsoever I'm doing now is the one teaching me, is the teacher of teacher. Teacher of teachers. We rejoice in that robe, the aroma of his robe as the teacher. Let's see John 3 verse 2. That's why scattered all over the pages of the Bible, they call him teacher. No other teacher like him. No other teacher like him. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. We rejoice in that aroma. Let's see Psalm 45, verse 2. Psalm 45, verse 2. No other teacher like him. In fact, many of us as teachers need to encounter that robe, that grace on him, that gift on him, so that you can open your mouth and talk anywhere. And your, your words will make people to bow and break the hardest of hearts. He says, thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Grace is poured onto his lips. Is grace personified. The grace of person and the grace of speech dwells in him. Superabundance grace. Look at me. Pours out of his mouth when he's talking. It's as if you should lick his mouth. That's why multitudes went after him. There's a way he speaks that you cannot just turn away. Grace, as he's speaking like this, literally, it's as if grace, oil, honey, every sweet aroma is dropping down. Dropping down. Grace is poured. Super abundance grace drops from his mouth. We rejoice in that aroma as our teacher. Let me show you before I close. Superabundance grace pours out of his mouth to cheer and enrich us, to build and establish his people. Let's see Hebrews 13 verse 9. Many of us, we need to encounter this grace in the robe of Jesus as our teacher. How many homes have been broken by people not knowing how to talk? That's why before he said, he that findeth a wife, go and check that Proverbs 18. He first addressed you that death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that loveth it shall eat the fruit thereof. Then the next verse says, he that findeth a wife. That means you don't know how to talk, don't find a wife. Because that your word will make the wife to pack out. 
You don't know how to talk. Don't marry a husband. How many homes have been broken by the tongue? Words that lack grace. Poisons of hasp. Others poison in people's mouth. Swords and spears coming out of people's mouths. And homes have been torn into pieces. As we speak about this, our master today, may you encounter that grace. That when you talk, grace will drip out of your mouth. People wait, they will wait for you as they wait for the, for the clouds and for the heavy rains. How many relationships have been broken into pieces? The Bible says that a soft word breaketh the bone. Yes. Many problems are among humanities as a result of words. Spears and swords in people's mouth. Hebrews 39. We rejoice in the aroma of his robe as our teacher. Hebrews 13 verse 9. He says, 9, 9. He says, Hebrews 13, I says, it is a good thing that the earth be established not on meats. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the earth be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have occupied, that have occupied the army. That's why as our teacher, we have been established by the grace pouring out of his mouth. We have been built up, established. By that words of grace coming out of his mouth. Let's also see Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. The words we rejoice in his robe as our teacher. Because grace pours out of his mouth to edify us, to build us up. Let's see Colossians 4, 9. Colossians 4, 6. Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, meaning that that grace is the salt in the mouth. It preserves. It sweetens. It flavors. That he may know how he ought to answer every man. Check out our master. He knows how to answer the Pharisee. He knows how to answer the scribes. He even knows how to answer the children. He knows how to answer the disciples. He always has the right word for the right persons. May we encounter that grace. Especially as a member of the fivefold ministry. We need it. Grace poured onto his lips. And that's why God had blessed him forever. When you know how to honor your conversation before men and before God, you become blessed. It attracts blessings to you. Let's see. Luke 4, 22. Luke 4, 22. And all bear witness and wonder that the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, it's not this Joseph's son. He speaks like this. They wonder at him. Where is he hearing these things he's saying? And we know he didn't go to school. He's an unlearned man. Gracious words pouring out of his mouth. May people wonder at you. Number, another one. His words drops as the rain and distills as the dew. His words drops as the rain and distills as the dew. Deuteronomy 32.2. Deuteronomy 32.2. I'm running now. Run with me, the media. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. As the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. He brings refreshing, renewal and, renew, and, and renewal. Refreshing and renewal. 
And you know, Moses was the one saying this, but Moses himself told them, Deuteronomy 18, 18. He said, a prophet shall the Lord send unto you. I will raise them up, a prophet from among their brethren, like unto me. So if Moses spoke and his words was like rain and dew, Jesus carried more grace. His words, greater rain and greater dew. May his words refresh and renew you. May he bring great fruitfulness into your life. Rain and dew brings fruitfulness. Your wilderness is becoming a fruitful land. When we hear the teacher, our, our desert bloom and flourish by the gracious words. His lips are like, his lips drip ma, comfort. Ma stands for comfort. Songs of Solomon 5.13. His lips are like, you know, his lips, his cheeks as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers, his, his lips like lilies, dropping sweet smelling ma. He brings comfort to your soul. That's the word of our teacher. Brings comfort. Soothing our pains. Let's see Luke 5.1. Luke 5.1. Luke 5.1. That's why multitude run after him. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word. Ah, I pray that, you know, this same grace that we contact, that people we press to hear my word. Yeah. Not everybody was coming for signs and wonders. Some just wanted to sit and hear that word. Yeah. Like rain, refreshing them. Like dew, refreshing them. Like ma, dropping on them to comfort and suit their pains. You hear him, you just notice that every pain has gone. By the time you are leaving. That's why multitudes go after him. They press rushing to get a seat. Thousands. May every five-fold minister contact this. Our ministry will not be barren. People are looking for comfort. And when ma drops from our tongue, they will come. He didn't come as multitude because he was the son of God. He knows how to speak with grace. Let's also see Songs of Solomon 8.13. Songs of Solomon 8.13. Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken to thy voice. Cause me to hear. I think King James says his voice is sweet. And that's why, you know, Queen of Sheba came to listen just to hear who? Solomon. First Kings 10. Let's quickly read it. I'm rounding up now. First Kings 10, verse 8. Give me verse 8, then we read verse 34. People will press to come and hear you. Our churches will be filled to the brim. When we can get this. Jesus showed us an example. Happy are the men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, that hear thy wisdom. Then give me verse 34. That was Queen of Sheba. She came all the way from the east. First Kings 10, give me 34. Okay, is he? Or is he 24? He says, all the kings, all the people came to come and listen to the wisdom of Solomon. 24. 24. And Matthew 12, 42. Jesus himself said, and a greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon. Number, number whatsoever. Not only his name is sweet. Not only his name is sweet. His voice is sweet. Songs of Solomon 2, 14. We sing that song, how sweet the name of Jesus sound in a believer's ear. Not only his name is sweet, his voice is sweet. May your voice be sweet to your husband. He buys you things that you don't ask for. You ask for 10,000 shillings, he gives you 100 Kenyan shillings, 100,000. 
God, make my tongue sweet to Daramola. <laughs> Not that you are talking, he's always angry. There are husbands like that, they don't even want to hear your voice at all. Because your voice is like the croaking of a toad and frog. Sweet voice commands favor. Every wife needs to pray it. Every wife needs to pray it. It will drive away this favor from you. The man will be ready to give you anything when your voice is sweet in his ears. Oh, my dove, in the cleft of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice and thy countenance. His lips drop as an honeycomb. His lips drop as an honeycomb. Songs of Solomon 4, 11. His lips drop as an honeycomb, bringing healing and health. Thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue and the smell of thy garment like the smell of Lebanon. So his, his mouth, his words, as our teacher, brings healing and health. Give me Proverbs 16, 24. I'm finishing very close now. Pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Proverbs 12, 18. Proverbs 12, 18. There is it that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is held. The tongue of our teacher is held. So we rejoice in the aroma of his tongue. Do you know that the, it was said, never man speak like him. Never man speak like him. John 7, 46. They sent officers to go and arrest him. They couldn't arrest him. They were carried away when they got to his presence. They forgot that they were sent to arrest. They sat down and became disciples. <laughs> they came with a handcuff, all manners of things to come and arrest. When they got there, they did. <laughs> Their DPO was wondering what happened. Commissioner of police that sent them was saying, ah. <laughs> they came back. Where is the man that we sent you to? He said, this one, you can't arrest him. <laughs> Never man speak like him. We got arrested. <laughs> Everything trying to arrest you will be arrested. Amen. We got arrested. By his gracious words. And that's why disciples left all at his word. Disciples, they left all. Matthew left the table of tax collectors to follow him. Matthew 9.9. 9. James and John left their father and the sheep. Peter and Andrew left their nets to run after him when he spoke to them. Power of conviction. Samaritan woman left her water pot. And the last one, even the winds and the waves were not spared from the authority of his word. Let's see Mark 4, 39 as I close. Winds and the waves, they were not speared. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. As you are hearing these gracious words today, every wind and waves in your life, I command them to be still. When you get back home, you won't see that storm again. Matthew seven twenty nine. Matthew 7, 29. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He taught as one having authority, not as the scribes. It is well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wow. Can you tell your neighbor which robes you have learned? Just one minute.
tell your neighbor what robe you have learned and how it applies to your life. Yes. I think it's good. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, we thank God. Amen. Which one did your friend tell you? The first one was what robe? No, we must show Dr. Laura we and from yesterday. The first one was what color of robe? The white robe. And the second one? The first white is for what? Is our priest. Eh? The second one? We well, better revise all of the second one was? Okay, Pastor Mora. Royalty. Royalty. Which was? Purple. Ah, yeah. The third one? It was what mantle? The prophetic mantle. The fourth one was the seamless, which means friend. The fifth one? Teacher. No, 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 no. There was one before the teacher. Was it not the, rede the redeemer? Isn't it? Yes. Then the teacher. I will miss you. You cannot miss all the rooms. <laughs> Go and listen again. Isn't it wonderful? His garments, that all came from his garments are scented. His garments are anointed. Let up all his garments. So she was taking us through the garments that are scented. Blessed be. I think the one that blessed me most was the seamless one. He's my friend. He calls us friend. He no longer calls us servant. He, in fact, let me tell you, you know, if you are not a woman of God, a servant of God, you are a friend of God. F-O-G. So you can as well now put your signature as Jane Wanjiko, F-O-G. Write it, F-O-G. Friend of? Friend of God. So don't be steward by people, woman of God, servant of God, mighty man of God. Just write F-O-G, friend of God. Amen. We want to give our offerings. Uh, let's do that. But before we do it, as you prepare, let them be giving. But look at me. Uh, put out your hand to get the envelope, but uh, look at me. And thank you so much for those who partnered with us. We truly thank God. And even today, you have an opportunity to do that. And the Lord will bless you. Give it. Give it your best. Uh, as we do that, we have uh, three announcements to make. One is what has already been made, the men's conference, which is on 1st of May. That 1st of May is a Wednesday. It's a holiday. Uh, we want to truly thank God for that. Um, we also want to announce that the, the Apostolic School of Ministry will happen here in Fountain Gate Church from 13th. Is it 13th? Yes, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. That is Tuesday to Friday here, and uh, we will be providing information as we go along. Please record that. Uh, Pastor Thamo is coming, and Sean is coming. Wow, yeah, so it's going to be heavy, and we thank God. I've been attending a school run by Sean, and I'm truly, truly blessed on the prophetic. Actually, I told Pastor James, next year, we will invite Sean for a prophetic school of ministry. I tell you, we have a few people that are attending. Uh, from here, it's been such a blessing. I look forward to the class. So thank you. And then the finally is the network of women ministers that is coming. This time it is three days. Not two days, yes. Thursday, 20, what, 28th or 29th? Check the November, whether it is a Thursday. Thursday is 28th or is it 29th? I cannot remember. Uh, it's 20 what? 28th, eh? Yeah, I think it is Thursday, 28th, yes. Thursday, 28th. Thursday, 29th. Thursday, uh, Friday, not Thursday. Thursday, 28th. Thursday, 20, Friday, 29th. Saturday, 30th will be the network of women ministers. You will get, uh, as you come out from lunch, you will get the, the, the brunchure. Um, and uh, if you don't have, a, if you have never attended, we need your contacts, although we have your contacts. But use that brunchure to invite other people. Uh, we have a, Dr. Laura will be coming back uh, to the network. Uh, we have, we have a, Reverend Winnie also will be in the network, and our father, Thamo. 
So it's gonna be very heavy. It's going to be heavy. I still cannot. I don't know how to 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 host him, but he will come. He said he will come, and when he says he will come, he will come. And uh, we are waiting for him to come. And uh, he also said that during that time, he wants to commission me into that ministry. So please uh, prepare, come, invite others. It's going to be a great time. I believe that the women ministry will be redefined during that conference. So please welcome and welcome your friends. Uh, we'll give you the brunchware today, but we will also ask you to help us to mobilize. If you need a few more brunchwas to give to people, it's okay. That brunchware has a place to cut so that you can, if you invite people, they can, you can get their contacts and you can send us their contacts, but please inform them that uh, we, we, you will give us their contacts so that when we write to them, they don't abuse us um, so that they know you gave us. So those are the three announcements we have. We also have uh, very many...